Hi everybody. Well, welcome to EdChat Interactive. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'll be uh, your host tonight, uh, and your main leader is going to be Anne Francis. We're going to be talking about games and how games can help you make your classes more inclusive um, and help you cope with diverse classes. We're uh, we're using the Shindig platform, which generally is a little bit different from most pe things people are in are used to. Um, can I uh, maybe see a show of hands for how many of you um, have used the Shindig platform before? And you know what you do is you move, if you move your cursor over your avatar and hover over your avatar, uh, there should be a raise hand button that appears. So I see um, a couple of you, a couple of you have used the platform before. Um, because a number of you haven't, I think what I'm going to do is we have a one minute video. Some of you may have played it when you first got in, but I'm going to just play the one minute video to describe the Shindig platform. Uh, and, you know, that will let everybody know how to, <clears throat> how to maneuver, how to uh, click up with other people. So just give us one second and I will pull it up. And here we go. Welcome to Shindig, the video chat event provider. Click on any participant's image to engage in a private video chat. Double click on another participant to add them to your existing conversation. Click the arrow to exit. You can also send an instant message, either to an individual or to your entire room. Want to interact with the host? Use the buttons on the lower right. Click raise hand to signal to the event administrator that you want to be brought on stage. Otherwise, submit a question to the host via text. If the system has not automatically detected your webcam and microphone, roll over your image and click Settings. Click your image to enable your working webcam. Choose a working microphone by selecting the option with volume indicators that flash green in response to your voice. We hope this was helpful. Enjoy the event. So, so I just noticed that the question that they ask on the video is, what was your first job? Now, I've been doing these for just over a year now, and I don't think anybody has ever asked me, what was your first job? Um, but basically, my first job, my first real job at, as a college was working for my dad. So um, if anybody actually did want to know. Let me pull up the my, my slides here for a second. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about EdChat Interactive. Uh, we're uh, we're a service. Our goal is to transfer best practices from school to school. As we looked around, there, there didn't seem to be a great way to, to do that because webinars are just, um, it's not really the way we learn. So we found this, this platform, Shindig, which allowed us to do small uh, uh, work groups and allow people to solve problems together and then and then come back together and discuss how they, they solve the problems. So we felt that was a much better way for us to transfer knowledge from one educator to another. And so we started EdChat Interactive in order to do that. Right at, at this point, everything that we're doing is free. Um, and we've we've had some really, really interesting sessions. And the session tonight is, uh, as I think, going to be a, a fascinating one. Um, a little bit more about the platform. You all saw on the video, there's the raise hand and the ask question buttons under, under your avatar. Um, those two buttons allow you to interact with me. Uh, Anne won't be able to see those, but if you raise your hand, I'll know that you need to talk to me about something. If you ask a question, I'll see the question. If it's a technical question, I can route the question to somebody from Shindig, hopefully. Um, if it's a question for Anne, I'll, um, I'll route the question over to her so that she can see it. But basically, those two buttons allow you to interact with me. On the other hand, if you hover over your icon, you see that there are, or you see that there are five icons there. Um, if you click on that I am uh, button uh, by your icon, that allows you to keep a back channel. Now, Anne will be able to see what you type in there, and that'll allow you to interact with the other participants in the room as well, or you can interact with any one, one person by selecting that person and just chatting with that person. If you do not want to interact with somebody, there's the private button, and then people can't really find you. Um, 
Oh, and I just and, and I just heard from Shindig that there are two people from Shindig who are here. So if you do have a technical problem, um, there are there are people who are here who can answer it, which is which is great. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, the reason we use Shindig is it allows everybody to interact uh, during the course of an online event. And so what I'd like to do is a, is an exercise. Um, I'd like you to find the avatar of another person who's in the room, click on the avatar and get into a conversation. I'd like you to, to share two things with each other. First of all, who are you and why you're here? And second of all, is what's your best technique for teaching a diverse group of kids? And so that'll be the first learning thing that you can do tonight is, is to learn with your fellow attendees. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna give you, give you about two or three minutes to interact with each other. Um, to get used to the platform and to share this information. And I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay. I thought I, I see a number of you have formed groups, and, and, and that's great. And, and some of you are still in groups. Uh, and so I hope you've had a chance to share some of your best practices. Uh, one thing that you can you can practice also is if you have your IM area open, why don't you put some of those uh, pieces that you've shared into the IM area, and we can share them with everybody. Uh, while you're doing that, I just want to move ahead. We have um, this is our last session before Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, we have two sessions scheduled so far in December. Um, December 16th is Russ Qualley, who is coming back for his actually fourth time. He's always been very popular. Uh, the, the title is here is, if we give students a voice, voice, do we really have to listen to them? And then on December 17th, we have Star Saxton coming on with Mark Burns, and they're going to be talking about assessment. And maybe after you end that, you'll think assessment may not be a four-letter word because there's ways of doing assessment that actually motivate kids and are not that difficult for uh, for teachers. So if you want to sign up for either one of those, go to the uh, our website, www.edchatinteractive.org, and register for those sessions. In the meantime, tonight, uh, we have Anne Francis, who's a special ed teacher, uh, who, who's a technology trainer, curriculum developer, and blogger. Uh, she blogs at iPad brainology.com. I'll explain that a little bit so, so that you can read it a little bit better. And Anne is going to be discussing games with us tonight and actually also offering a really interesting uh, free, as a free in offer uh, for Schoolbo. So let me stop this and I'll bring Anne up to the stage. Anne, well, Welcome to EdChat Interactive. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Hi, just to let you know, I am having a little bit of in and out. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can, we can hear you fine. Can you hear us? Okay, because I'm a little bit of going in and out. I can hear you now, yes. Okay, okay, um, and, I'll, and I'll type, uh, I'll, I'll type this in also so you, so you know that I can hear you. Um, just a, a quick question. Um, you said you're having in and outs. I guess you've had a little bit of precipitation today, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, how much rain have you had yes, today? Yes, I have. So uh, how much? We've had th over three inches and some places near us have had seven. So that could be one some of the reasons why you're had going seven in. inches yeah. today. Wow. One of the reasons why you're going in and out, right? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I hope the rain stops. Can you hear me, though, solid? <laughs> yes. I hear you fine. Um, so what, uh, what I think I'll do is I'll pull okay. your slides up, okay, so that you can get started. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, sounds good. Hi everyone, I'm really glad to see you. And my name is Ann Francis. I'm a special ed teacher for fifth and sixth grade here in Buffalo, Germany. 
at Buffalo Curry Middle School. I also teach for the RSET Consortium. Uh, we're a very small school, so we get together with about 20 other schools, and we have teachers that go to different schools and provide technology. So I've been doing that for about four years. And I was really lucky last week. I got to meet Steve Anderson. I went and uh, presented at the uh, Teaching and Learning iPad conference in North Carolina last week. So I got to meet him, and he is uh, one of the founders of Shindig. So I hope uh, you're in store for a really neat treat tonight. We're teaching about school so it isn't just for gaming, and I'd like you to find out why. Mitch, can you forward us? A lot of people have the myth that gaming just wastes time and that there's no real learning. Uh, some of that comes from uh, some of the games that maybe were just played as rewards or possible what teachers felt are time wasters. But hopefully after uh, we take some time to talk and it will be interactive so you'll have time to make comments about how this may not, uh, you may not have the same opinion at the end of the hour. Uh, please forward. So one of the other things that um, I wanted to talk about is in an article that I read about uh, gamification. Um, Mitch, are you able to move the slide a little bit or move me down a little bit? Because it's blocking part of what I'm reading. OK, thank you. Um, on the first one, that's fine, Mitch, that, that's fine. Um, just let me read that first one and we'll go back up again. Thank you. Um, one of the things that, that we had learned is 97% of people play, of uh, children and adults are playing games at this time. So one of the things we wanted to know or wanted to harness is if they're already playing games, we need to take advantage of that, uh, those types of things that they're already doing. Mitch, would you go ahead and put those back up, please? in the large edition. Thank you. Uh, on average, gamers fail 80% of the time, and yet they still find gaming enjoyable. And I don't know if some of you have played those games, but many, many times you have to do even just some of the little games over and over again to face, uh, to be able to uh, go past the levels. So even with education and flex, with uh, different uh, standards being taught, uh, different testing being taught, the majority of teachers still have a better than 20% chance that their lesson will succeed. Gamers are playing more than 13 hours per week. So if they're playing that long, uh, we need to harness some of uh, this into legitimate data-proven uh, learning. Go ahead and forward, please. Uh, gamers, also employers, have said or people that are working on jobs have also said that they would be more willing to learn and it would be more interesting to them if things were gamified. Uh, go ahead, Mitch, and put it back up large. Uh, with this in mind, we want to prepare kids in college and career, and we need to prepare them for that now. Uh, I have read all kinds of very interesting articles in the last week about colleges that are teaching courses through gamification and that they're doing studies on it and the students are learning more in some of the MBA programs doing it gamified than in the traditional professor versus uh, student role. Another really interesting statistic that I had found and on these slides you can click through to the sources. Uh, one of them was, by 2015, half the companies creating innovation will gamify aspects of their business. So if we want our kids college and career ready, we want to make sure that our kids are uh, able to use this cutting edge technology. Forward, please. So one of the things when I'm looking at what I want my students to do is I want to make sure that I have a game that gives me back data. I don't want them just playing something so that they're simply counting coins or giving them something that would just be a substitution. I want to really give them something that's redefining their learning and making sure that they're in charge of their learning. 
So when you're picking something, um, make sure that you are using something that gives them the best bang for their buck. And no matter what game you pick, students are going to like different games no matter what. Um, some may favor more of the role playing, some may favor more of the, the timed or type things. Go ahead and forward. So now I would like uh, for us to have a discussion, which would be your turn. So I'd like you to get with at least one other person and I'll give you about three to five minutes and I'll be coming around in the groups to um, see where you're going with this. But what I'd like you guys to discuss uh, before we talk about particular games is what are three ways that gaming can be used to assess learning? And Mitch, can you help us get started with that, please? Okay, oh, sure, Ann. So this is this is the place again where you interact with each other. Uh, so what what we'd like you to do is click on other people's icon. I see a number of you are doing that already. And in your group, come up with at least three ways gaming can be used to assess learning. And what we'd also like you to do is once you come up with your three ways in your group, to, uh, for at least one person in the group to then put them into the IM chat so that other people can, can see it as well. I also want to say that there was a question uh, from Jeff as to whether uh, we'll make these slides available. And yes, we intend to make the slides available uh, when, when I get a copy of the final video, uh, and then we'll post that and we'll also post the slides. So now I'm going to pull myself down. We'll give you another, what, two, three minutes to discuss in groups uh, to come up with three ways that gaming can be used to assess learning. And then uh, we'll bring Ann back up. Okay, so that was uh, that was about four or five minutes. I saw most of you were in group, although I did not see um, on my on my backup computer. I didn't see anybody typing anything anything in. But let me bring Anne up, and let me ask her. So Anne, uh, did you get a chance to talk to anybody in the groups? Uh, yes, Anne? I talked to Jeff. And uh -huh. the, he is a great teacher that teaches STEM, and he has three iPads. Uh huh. Uh, he has three iPads that he's using gamification with multiplication. Uh huh. So would you like to um, would, you, would you like me to bring Jeff up? Do you want to talk to him about what some some of the things that he was doing with assessment? Uh, or? Could we call up someone from one of the other groups? Sure. So, uh, yeah, so s could somebody uh, raise their hand and then I can bring you up? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to pick somebody, uh, which I can do. Um, ah, I see somebody's putting their hand up. Okay, so I'm hearing pick, different conversations, so I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me bring, let me come down and I'll bring somebody up one second. Hello. Nobody Hi, Michael. Can, can you tell us some of the ways that you're using it? Um. Yes. Everybody hears me now, or how does it work? Or oh, and only you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry, Michael. It looked like we were having a little bit of trouble with Anne, but basically, yes, everybody can hear you. So oh, okay. uh, maybe could you can you tell us a little bit about um, you know how you use uh, games to assess students? Uh, well, actually, uh, Mitch, uh, first uh, you you can hear me, right, Mitch? Yes. Okay. First, I would like you to, um, uh, if people don't mind, to email each of us. Um, email addresses of everybody so that we would be able to communicate later. For example, I talked to Nathan a minute mm -hmm. ago, and uh, uh, this was the idea that we uh, we just developed. 
uh, uh -huh. resume, I think. But answering your question, I don't use uh, gaming teaching students. I I, I right. teach at uh, I teach at the university, but I'm thinking I also have the company, and we are thinking um, to gamify uh, process of teaching. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And my concern is what Anne uh, started uh, uh, from that I has I still have the same concern that um, uh, gaming to a certain extent contradicts learning. And actually, the reason I'm participating in this uh, seminar, mm -hmm. I want uh, people uh, who participate in it, other participants, to change mm -hmm. my opinion. Because I want to, okay. I want to believe that it is uh, complementary. Okay. Uh, but but still, um, well, at least well, and also obviously, based on my experience, I can say that it is very different to teach adult students, like if if a person is twenty mm -hmm. years old, and uh, a, a child who is ten years old. So yep, yep, difference and. It would be very interesting if um, Anne or anybody would tell um, what is, in your opinion, a uh, difference in application of gamification or gaming uh, mm -hmm. based on the age of a person or a student. Okay. That's a great question. I will say Anne apologized because the audio was not, she could not hear your audio. But uh, I'm going to bring you down, and I'm going to bring back up, and then I'm going to ask your question to her. Okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, Anne, you're back up. Yes. And can you hear me? Yes. And, and you can hear me? Yeah. Miss, I'm, yes, when I'm in chat, that's when it cuts out. If okay. I'm in... Yes, I can hear you, but if I'm in with someone else or someone's clicked to me, that's when I cannot hear. Okay. Um, well, then we'll just we'll could just you interact. Summarize this what way. Michael said, because I could only yes. hear parts so, of what he said. So Michael's question was: um, Are there differences, or what are the differences in using games with with students of different ages that you've noticed? So are there different ways that you would use games, let's say, in elementary school versus the way you would use games in middle school, which is the uh, Well, because or... I teach special education, it's really important mm -hmm. for me to try to... Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, obviously, for elementary school, you want to pick ones that are easier or ones that uh, are obviously more interactive with the, mm -hmm. uh, the middle school and high school. They're often ready for more of the critical thinking. We did Hour of Code in Makerspace last night. Minecraft went live on Makerspace as well as Star Wars, and the kids had a great, great time because I teach uh, fifth through eighth graders for Makerspace. Well, and you were able to have them do Hour of Code with all of your students in, 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 in you know, with, with everybody, right? Or mostly everybody. Yes, and they all, yes, and they all helped each other out. I was the only one who didn't earn my certificate last night because I was working on some other stuff, but they, they all helped uh -huh. each other out, and it was mm -hmm. wonderful, way ahead of me. Oh, that's great. So, uh, do you want me to bring your slides back up? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. All right, so here we go. All right, we're ready to go. Uh, so this is my absolute favorite game uh, that I use with my kids. I've been using it for about a year and a half. It's called School Bow. Uh, the reason that I use this is it, uh, it emphasizes ELA math, and they've now added foreign languages. And one of my favorite things is it's just in one minute. It has been really hard for me to find uh, some types of games that my special ed 
uh, education children feel successful at, often they're not able to read it or they're not able to have motor skills where they're able to do it fast enough. And Schoolbow has greatly uh, changed this for them. Uh, there's challenging, they've got a challenging content algorithm, which means that they have about four tests that they start with. They start very basic, touch the S, touch the A, touch the nine, touch the eight. And it quickly uh, spirals up to where it becomes challenging content for them. Uh, Schoolbow right now is offering a free forever license for teachers. So all you need to do is go in and sign up. Uh, one of the great things I like about Schoolbow also is that it's available on all platforms. Um, I'm also trying to get away from things that are simply on the iPad, even though I absolutely love the iPad. I want to make sure that it's available on, this is available on PC, it's available on Chrome, it's available on Windows, uh, it's available on everything. There's a... Uh, this to download it on the iPads, you'd go to Schoolbow Common Core Skills. There's also a set of books that go along with their characters that are in Schoolbow. Um, I feel that this is appropriate for pre K through eighth grade, and it has a complete teacher dashboard. So we'll be talking more about that in some of the next slides. Um, Mitch, could you go forward, please? So, with this, uh, the tests uh, place the student. The games continually reassess student. It increases in difficulty as the students master new content. So there's special certificates and trophies as the kids hit milestones. So as they log in, uh, it creates a news feed. You're able to tell how many questions they've answered. I have some children that have earned. Uh, my lowest child has answered over 10,000 correct questions. And that has really exciting because uh, she has kept with it. She hasn't been frustrated. Even though it's one minute, she, she knows if she doesn't get it this time, we just keep going. If she misses or any of the students miss three questions, the game automatically ends as it knows it's too difficult and it re reassesses the student and brings their challenging material back down. Uh, I have not had any students that do not like this. And you're also able on your dashboard to see the percent of improvement for each student, which is really exciting. Uh, Mitch, can you go forward? Uh, so the thing I really like about this is every student is successful. And with the that I have, I do not have any that have less than an 86% success rate. I don't think we can find anything that has that success rate. It has built-in rewards for boys and girls. So uh, they, they, when they go in, they pick an avatar, they dress the avatar, they can make it look like them, they can make it look like someone else. They have different jets and ships and helicopters that they can earn. If they answer 500 questions, they get to uh, dress in a hero outfit for the week, which is really exciting. Kids come over and tell me when they've hit that or when they're close. Um, timing does not seem to be an issue like it is with a lot of other games, and I also use it to track IEP goals. Uh, Mitch, can you go forward? So, for example, this is one of the students I have, and I've blocked out their name, but uh, on it, this splits their the dashboard splits into numeracy and literacy. For so, for example, this student has answered 91% of his questions correctly. And as we go down, it shows their mastery level. So it's very easily color coded. The light blue would be things that they are still working on. Uh, the medium blue would be things that that they're they're almost ready or are in the process of almost mastering. And obviously that dark blue is what they've mastered. So as we go down through this, we're able to tell exactly what skill he's he's almost got or he's mastered, how many answers that he's had. And over here on the left, it even tells what percentage since he started. For example, in one skill alone, he's increased 25%. So it gives us a lot of data back. Uh, go ahead and forward, please. For another student, uh, she is in still some of the beginning skills. So she's still on her counting to six. She has answered uh, 1,156 questions. So 
This was a skill that took her a long time to learn. However, she's mastered it. But then we can see down here too with single digits and ordering up to 10, but that's still an area that's very hard for her. Uh, if I had taken another screenshot further down, you can kind of see the top of the school bow. And this, what this talks about is uh, school bow is getting ready for their yearly challenge of the United States against Great Britain. And I believe it's Australia versus New Zealand. And that's a really exciting time for the kids. Uh, they get to uh, compete against kids from other nations. And when they, one of the neat things about this is when they log on, they may see kids from other areas, but it's their cartoon figure and it just says either the school or the state they're from. And if there are not enough players, it pits them against a school bow character, which is really exciting. So can you go forward, please? So some of the things that I had talked about personalizing and changing their avatar, um, I even made one so that I can look and see at the different types of uh, games that the kids are playing. There's all kinds of different worlds. There's a dinosaur world, there's an art world, there's an ocean world. So there's plenty to keep everyone um, happy. They earn coins. They're able to spend those coins. Uh, they can pick the new worlds to work in or to uh, play in. Uh, the worldwide competitions, they check it every morning to see where they're at. And the most important thing is it being available on all platforms. So sometimes I can log in and see the kids are playing at home. And this is a real challenge for us because we have very few kids that have internet at home right now. So if I do see one that's uh, logging in, it's really exciting because that means that they're also taking their learning home. Uh, go ahead and please. So. Now that I've presented school bow, there's a lot of other games that can be used for assessment. So I'd like to hear from you. So if we can get into groups again, like we did before, if you guys went up with two or three other games that you use and how you assess the students. And Mitch, if you'd give us about five minutes. Okay, here we are again at another uh, group interaction. This is a chance for you all to talk about games that you're currently using in your classes or with your students and how or whether those games can be used for assessment. Now, sometimes games, the game itself doesn't assess, but as a teacher, as you're watching the student play, uh, you can get a, a, a general idea of what the student is learning. So, so that would be another series of uh, questions that you can ask each other is if the games that you're using are not actually doing assessing, how do you really know what the students learn? Because as teachers, you, there's, there's many other ways of assessing uh, what, what learning is taking place. So I'm going to give you another three minutes or so to discuss this in groups. I'd like to encourage you to type interesting comments into the chat box, into the IM, so that other people can see them also. And um, in about three or four minutes, I'll bring Anne back up here. Okay, uh, so that, that I guess gave everybody a good chance to talk with each other. Um, I want to thank uh, Nathan uh, for posting in the uh, IM room uh, the web address of Schoolbow. And remember, it's, it's free. So this is something that you can use in your classrooms. Uh, let me bring Anne up. Oh, so this time, were you able to hear people? Yeah, the more people that added, though, it was harder and harder to hear. So uh -huh. that was a little bit of a challenge. But um, I talked with Dawn, and she's a third to fifth grade special ed teacher. And she's mm -hmm. using a program for math called Reflex. So, uh -huh. and another t uh, another person that I connected with was, was Jeff, and his sister-in-law teaches about nine, nine miles from me. So, wow. we're doing <laughs> some other stuff besides just gaming. <laughs> uh -huh. That's interesting. So, but that um, gave me even, I had not heard of Reflex. Okay, that gave so me even you, a new tool to look up tonight. And would, is there anybody that you'd like to bring up, or should we ask for volunteers to talk about some of the games that they're using? Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, okay. let's do volunteers. 
Okay. So, um, so again, if you uh, if you can raise your hand uh, so that I know somebody to bring up, and if you don't raise your hand, then I'm going to pick somebody. Um, <laughs> ah, there goes somebody right there. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm going to stop myself and bring. Hello. So tell us what you're uh, using. So, um, I'm not a teacher by any means, uh, but I work at Shindig, and I'm looking to uh, learn a little bit more about what the teachers are using because I know that when I started a club in college, we did a lot of um, education about social media and things like that. Uh, and what was really cool was to see how different students were using um, when they were trying to build their own projects, different types of ways of getting people interested in the uh, product by integrating some kind of gamification. The same element is used in education, um, like badges and avatars and things like that. They go along with uh, what companies are building. So um, if there's stuff I can share, I can, I can share that I know that my younger brother has been using Khan Academy, which I find to be uh, very useful, and there's some gamified elements in there. Um, I know that on my for myself, I, I've definitely explored different websites. I'm definitely looking for recommendations that adults can use too. Um, but at the same time, I know that people should be exploring the actual games themselves to gamified education because there are so many games out there that provide a very solid education in different areas. So like I mentioned, I think when I was speaking to you earlier, Anne, about um, the game Civilization, which is a history-based game. It's been around for many, many years. Um, it's a very old game. Um, and there's also uh, Minecraft, which people are probably really familiar with if the students have mentioned it to them. Uh, Minecraft is fantastic because developers have uh, been advocating for teaching the kids who are already in the game how to uh, program for Minecraft. So there are actually add-ons where you can teach students about all different sorts of things, from typing to English to learning how to program, just by plugging in things into the back-end folders of Minecraft. Because Minecraft is very customizable. And your students might already know how to do this. My brother, he's like 11 years old, and he does this every day. <laughs> um, yes, they they bring me stuff every day and show me what they've done. And I have no idea about the creepers and everything else, but they know it to a T, and they buzz through our code very easily yesterday. It's generally pretty simplistic stuff. Like on the file end, what you're looking for is a, a folder which contains the... Um, like the different plugins for for Minecraft, and it, it, I would advise everybody to try it out and, and play around with the Minecraft application. You just look for I think it's called the bin folder, and make sure you have like a um, appropriate JavaScript plugin. And then when you run the game, you'll see the options to run that particular plugin. Uh huh. <laughs> so you can run the educate you can run those education plugins for your students. Well, my 11-year-olds could probably find that better than I can. Yeah, and, and ask um, them to show you. Ultimately, that will be the best way to learn yeah. it. Okay, and Dawn wanted to come up, and she had a comment, too. Nathan, thank you. Hi, Dawn. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. We don't... <laughs> Oh, okay. I can hear you. Sorry, this first time I've ever done this, I'm hitting wrong buttons. Um, the, I was the one that brought up the reflex, um, math reflex, and it, for um, maybe so much upper level uh, classes, but I teach um, fifth, third through fifth grade special ed, and my kids are anywhere from one to three grades below math level. And with the math reflex, it has an avatar. The kids can go in, you know, pick the character that they want. They can buy different things. They can, um, they have to manage their money with the coins that they win. But it only focuses on 
addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, or at least the program that we have with our school. And what I like about that is as they master a skill, it becomes more difficult. So the child doesn't move up until they become comfortable with the lesson that um, is at their level. And they've got all different types of um, adventures and rooms that they can go in and out of, you know, so they don't get bored. And if they get tired of one, they can go into another and it will only focus on the skill that you give them. So if you say just addition and subtraction, all their games only focuses on those two skills. And then if you want to do more than division, it would only focus on their skills. And um, the comment that I made before is my kids actually beg for this game because they enjoy it that much. So it works on um, fluency in addition to, um, you know, just knowing how to do basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So they're using some of those critical, thinking. Those critical thinking. Yes, and, place, and place. I'm sorry. So they're using critical thinking skills instead of replacing that instruction. Yes, some of the games are timed, so there's pressure, and they can pick and choose when they want to put the pressure on themselves. Well, that makes it great. That we should have that too. Yeah. So, the, like I said, I, they, they really enjoy it a lot. And our entire school has that program for the kids. And um, th different grade levels compete against each other. And it also prints out a report so you can see what, they're, what they have and have not mastered. And that's really what we're wanting to know is for them to show us what they know. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate your exactly. comments. So do you want me to bring your slides back up from where we left off? Uh, yeah, I think there's just a couple of, I think there's just one left. Okay. Um, all right. So well, one uh, of the things I wanted to mention is there's a lot, there's a lot of games. <laughs> I'm sorry, you may have meant to mention it to me. Yes, go ahead. There's a lot okay. of games. <laughs> so there's, uh, while there's a lot of games available, um, I think one of the best ones to start with is Schoolbow. And um, even if you're thinking about it, make sure that you go ahead and register for their forever free license uh, because free, free, especially when you're a teacher. So, um, and just really keep your mind open about how you can assess your kids with different types of games. And Mitch, I think there's just that one contact slide up. If you'd pull that one up, please. Okay. Before, just what do you mean by forever free? I mean, um, is it free for the teacher? Or what what what's free? So the teacher signs up for the account and puts students on his or her class list. And then the, the it um, unlike other games where you get 30 days or 60 days, it will be an unlimited free uh, account where you can add and subtract students as you need to. So the next year with your next class, you can add the students the next year also. Yes, um, I had I worked with Jessica and rolled my kids over and pushed kids out that were done and put kids in that needed to be there. And um, I've got a whole new set for this year, and it was totally free. Okay. All right. So let me bring the next slide up for you. So when we're thinking about gaming, it isn't just something that we need to do in the future because the future is, is really now. Gaming can be a really valuable tool for teachers. So, uh, Everybody, we heard lots of different games. Tonight we heard five or six different specific examples. And so what may work in one class may not work in your class, but you may find one that just uh, is the bomb for all the kids. Uh, 
And so make sure, once again, that you're getting uh, a game that gives you data back because when we go to our administrators and they're asking why we need this or why we're doing this with our kids, we'll have that hard data right there of what we need to do. Uh, can you go forward one, please? And I just wanted to let you know that uh, I have a lot of trainings and such on my site. And uh, you can reach me at ipadg at gmail. I have a Pinterest account. I have about 60 different boards that I keep active in for different teaching resources. Uh, you can meet, reach me on Twitter at iPadBrainology or my website, iPadBrainology.com. I do uh, consultation and training because my favorite thing is to teach teachers that just a little tweak uh, creates really awesome lessons. So if there's something that I can do or that you have questions, make sure that you please email me. And I hope that we gave you some really practical examples today of how gaming is good for assessment. And I'm really glad that you guys were here today. Well, thank you. And um, I just, you mentioned a, a few games, you, met, you know, School Bowl, of course, and that sounds like, well, I mean, that was really one of the reasons why right. I thought it would, it would be great to have you, you here is, is because of the, the free forever offer from School Bowl. Um, and, and I played their games and I, and I thought that they were really interesting. Uh, you mentioned that you, that with your kids, you play Minecraft. Um, so what are, what are, uh, what, what do you see from the kids that um, when they're playing these games that is different from when you're using other methods of teaching? Well, one of the things is the collaboration between them. Such, for example, last night, there was three or four crowded around a student that was having a hard time getting through level 18. So they were helping him code it so that he could get up to the same level that they were at. And that's one of the college and career ready standards that businesses are always asking for is that we can work in a group. You can't get that mm -hmm. if they're sitting there with a worksheet by themselves. There's just no way to get that type of learning. So, so in addition to the, well, what people call 21st century skills, although I really hate that term because collaboration was something that it, you know, people have been doing for thousands of years, but um, but what? Anyhow, using the term twenty first century skills, in addition to those skills, do you find that the kids are able to learn or sharpen their academic skills as as well? Oh, absolutely! Because they don't even realize that they're learning to read. We've got some almost non readers that you put Minecraft and some of those things in front of them. They are reading very hard academic vocabulary words, and they they know what JavaScript is and how to turn, and they don't even realize sometimes that they're working with angles and that they're doing three and four step instructions. So it's all embedded in there, and they don't even realize what they're doing, which is the best thing. Well, and that, that's an interesting thing because I, I was reading some research about the fact that when kids, you know, we we're, we, we talk about leveling reading, and so we take passages and, and we bring them down to like the first grade level, the second grade level, and the third grade level. And if you're, if, if you're at the third grade level, you can read basically the same thing, but using a more difficult vocabulary or a richer uh, paragraph. But the fact of the matter is that the um, research has shown that kids are capable of increasing their reading level by five grades, and in some many cases even more, if they're really interested in the subject. And I guess that's another thing that games do, right? Yeah, and I've really read some of that research lately too about how gamification is just expanding kids' reading vocabulary. Another study that I read recently was about some young ladies in India where they don't get a lot of education, and they were reading the closed captioning on TV and how that was increasing their reading levels too. So there's other ways besides just the kill and drill and putting worksheets in front of them. Okay. So uh, just in, in case you didn't get the email address um, for the free offer, it's info, I-F-O, at schoolbow.com. And if you email, send an email to info at schoolbow.com, then they'll give you instructions on how to get the forever free um, offer from Skolbo, and then you'll be able to use these games forever. And as you say, it's 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 how well how many games are there in Skolbo? Oh, I don't know. 
There's hundreds, <laughs> and now I've opened yeah, I, language I only dragon. Have 10 fingers. I can, that, that's about as much as I can count, <laughs> right? There's more than yeah. ten, right? Um, yeah, and the, I tried and plus, the language yeah. dragon. Uh And I tried the Chinese, and I'm terrible at it. They have a new language dragon. It has five different languages, and I tried the Chinese, and I'm terrible at it, so I got to keep going. Okay, okay. Well, um, Anne, thank you, thank you for coming tonight. Um, I, 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 I found it fascinating, as you know, and often I find these fascinating. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. And for people, we will be putting the slides up in the next few days, um, along with, uh, I suspect, a an archive of of this video. And uh, please go to our site, www.collegepilot.org. Sorry, wrong, wrong. Boy, that's <laughs> that's an old one. Uh, www.edgeinteractive.org uh, because we have some, some uh, interesting sessions coming up in December. We've got sessions now scheduled on writing in January, February, March, and April, and we're adding uh, sessions all the time. So, um, Anne, um, hope the rain stops. And, uh, yeah, and you can have, have a nice evening. Um, and uh, to everybody else, uh, thank you for coming to EdChat Interactive. I hope to see you at future events. And um, have a good evening, everybody. Good night.